When it comes to our nation's government, we here at the Marshall Administration need what's best for everyone in every walk of life in our nation. We can't have this Bernie Sanders socialist crap and a guy who yells at people, you're fired, yeah, and also has memes about stubbing his toe. We don't even have to mention Hillary. I'm running for president. No, God! No, God, please, no, no! We need a government run the right way, the Federalist lay. As your next president, I, Nathan Marshall, will do everything in my power to preserve the foundations that our country adopted so many years ago with the lines, we the people. Oh. With a federal system, a strong republic, a representative national government will be possible, even though the citizens lack civic virtue. <laughs> this type of system would be the best for avoiding factions. Factions are evil! Yeah, they are. Our federal system would mean a strong country, unified, one nation, under God. This national government is the best way for us to work together, as a team, to unify the states, to regulate trade and commerce between them, and to defend ourselves from international threats. Now, 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 I know what you're thinking, that this national government will become all powerful and taking over civilization, just like England did. Fear not, young one, this is where the system of checks and balances comes into play. My baby! Checks and balances will keep our government healthy as ever and ensure that no one branch gets too much power. Our president, aka me, checks Congress and the judiciary. Our Congress checks the president and the judiciary. And the judiciary checks Congress and the president. Our legislative branch is set up quite well. Everything runs smoothly. Except it's harder to get a bill passed than it is to get an A on a Megarian test. For the Senate and House of Representatives, there is equal and proportionate representation in our legislator. And then the President, me. The Electoral College is made up so that the citizens don't elect stupid people like Donald Trump, China, 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 Hillary Clinton, Hello, Iowa, I'm back, or Brad Rindos. One, two, three. Just to name a few. The president is the head honcho of the government and is basically a total boss. What's more, the judicial branch is in place to ensure that the citizens of our great country have a line of defense against our government. Again, there is a system of checks and balances in this branch, like the fact that judges serve for life. All these checks and balances are in place so that people know that although we have a strong national government like England, it is not possible for our government to become as oppressive as they. Let's see what our anti-federalist friends have to say about that. Oh. Ow! <laughs> Now keep in mind, our Constitution will not include a Bill of Rights. The right and proper way to write a Constitution is to exclude this section, or if a right is not stated, then the government will think that they can take it away. Let's take a look. Onward, Belvedere! The Republic form of government is a system where many individuals elect representatives to represent them in government. This is a system designed so that representatives can make decisions based on what is best for the large group of people they represent. It is important to make a representative represent more people so that the factions can have less of an effect on the choices the government makes. Our legislative branch has two houses so that both large and small states have proper representation with the proportionate house and the equal representation in the Senate. The judicial branch is designed to be the weakest branch of government, as it has control of neither the sword nor the purse. However, this branch is nonetheless important because it serves as a place to justify the acts of the government and determine them either unconstitutional or constitutional. To basically make sure that the government follows the great system of government we set up in the Constitution. 
The president is the leader of the executive branch. He is the main nacho of the government. The president has many powers, most of which are checked by the other branches of government to ensure that he does not become too powerful. The president is the person who can decide if a bill becomes a law. If he vetoes it, then Congress can override his veto with a supermajority vote. It may instill fear that the president is capable of implementing martial law, the total rule of one man, which is why Hamilton compares the powers of the president to the powers of the British king in the Federalist Letter number 69, concluding that the powers of the former are much more inferior. Congress has two houses, the House of Representatives, which is elected by the people, and the number of representatives is based on population. And then there's the Senate, which has two representatives from each state. This is like this because a compromise was reached between the bigger states and the smaller states. The senators are elected by state legislators to further connect the state and federal governments. Congress has a lot of power. For example, they can either pass a bill onto the president for him to sign, and if he doesn't sign it, the bill can still become a law if Congress overrides the veto with a two-thirds vote. It's the Senate's job to create lower courts than the Supreme Court. The House of Representatives decides if they should impeach a government official, and the <coughs> Senate tries the impeachment. And if the Senate decides if the impeachment is valid, then they will convict the government official. Finally, the system of checks and balances. This is how we can reassure the people that no one branch of government becomes too powerful. Some of the checks of the federal government include the president's ability to veto a bill and the fact that Congress can override that veto. The fact that the president appoints Supreme Court justices for life is a check on the Supreme Court. And in turn, the Supreme Court can rule the actions of the president unconstitutional. The legislative branch has the sole power to declare war, but the commander-in-chief, the president, can deploy troops whenever he likes. All of these balances create a system that makes each branch of government equally powerful. Here in the United States of America, life is awful. Our country was founded on the principles of meritocracy and liberty. And in current government, under the Articles of Confederation, neither of which is possible. That is why I, Nathan Marshall, plan to do everything in my power to make America great again through a federalist system such as this. Under such a federalist system, our nation will be significantly more united, thus allowing the government to control trade between states and defending our nation and our rights as a whole. Artist, that is.